This is on the Quick Speed Shop. Check it out. Bam, behind me. I'm putting the metal on the vintage backyard gas station. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, bam, here we go. It's an exciting day today. I got off work half day and I ran down. I got my metal for the building. Check this out. Now this is uh, made by a local, uh, I think they're Mennonite company down a couple hours from me and they've got the machine, the metal comes in the bale. They cut it and run it through and it puts all the ribs in it and stuff. They're super cool people. I've made uh, all my buildings that I've got the metal from the last 10 years I've got from them. And uh, so I ran down to my friend Jack and we got it and the building, this building, the metal is going to be gray on everything. Um, this brown sheet is just a cover sheet they give you so you can strap it down. But I've got some corner pieces, or uh, this is the Denver gable that goes up on the roof. i got some pieces of that. Got all my metals for different sizes for the roof and the wall in here. And then I got my trim in the back of the truck. I got the fascia trim, uh, corner piece of the back wall, some uh, Z, Z flashing, and some couple of J pieces. So got all the metal here. And today, in this video, we're going to go Kirk and start putting this thing together. I love how they do this here. They put the uh, the color, the number one, this is the 40-year painted, 40-year warranty, 29-gauge uh, galvalume. And it puts your dimensions on here. So the back wall is 10 foot 8 inches, and it puts it on there. And then you can see 10 foot 6, that's my uh, front wall and my one side wall. And then you get the longer pieces there up to 14 foot for the two pieces of the roof. But it comes all cut out perfectly stacked up and uh, you can see that's a lot of steel sitting there I'm gonna go ahead and start with the back wall since it's on top and then we'll do the the side wall and the interior front wall because they're next and then uh, the next one to 12 foot 6 is the overhang and then the 12 foot 9 and the 14 foot are the upper roof okay let me show you the trim I'm using here up on the top of the panel, I'm using a J trim, which that's the J like that, but it using it like that. And on the bottom, I've got a bottom end wall section, which goes under the panel and then the water drips off here. I'll show you over here. So on the top here, the panel comes up into the J channel like that. And sometimes you can use like a F and J, which will have a soffit piece, but I'm not sure what I'm doing for soffit, so I'm just using this on top. And then on the bottom, your panel will fit on there and that seals up the end of the gaps and lets water run down. So I've got the trim, upper J trim here, under there, and I've got the lower work all the way around. So I'm almost ready to put the panel on. And I'm going to have some kind of soffit up under here. I'm not sure uh, what it's going to be yet. Um, if I knew, if I was using like uh, plastic, like perforated soffit, I would use the F and J trim and be able to slide the soffit up in there. I think I'm going to use some old uh, tongue and groove barn boards for my friend, so I'm not sure, but for the, for this building, it's going to be fine to run the siding up and then add the soffit later. One thing I do would want to box these corners in with some 2x4 scraps just to, to solid this corner up and seal it up, and then there's going to be uh, one on the front and barn board on the front of this eventually. Okay, so I got all my uh, posts all boxed in here. I just used some scrap 2x6 that was a... Uh, old and weathered it didn't need to do anything so just fill it up i got that side and then the corner box in down there so now we're ready to put metal on i'm going to start on this side i'm going to work this way because the wind comes out of the west which is that way and it comes out of the south that way you don't want to put your metal on uh out of the wind so if, if i start down there and then overlapped every sheet in theory if it was in like a hurricane the wind could get under the first piece and peel all these off you know, coming back this way but if I, I go like this the worst it could do is peel the outside piece off and then I have to work to try to peel the other piece off it it wouldn't have that overlap so I'm gonna start here on this side and whoop, go down that way down the wall okay I got the first panel ready to go on I made one alteration I'll show you here Of course, the wind wants to pick up the second I want to put metal on, but here we go. What I did is I cut the outside first rib off because this 
only this corner. I'm going to have barn wood on the front of my post. So I'm going to put a little piece of barn wood to make a, a barn wood corner. So I cut the first rib off um, when my sheet metal shears and so that's gone. But I've got the panel stood up. It's on the base plate. It's up in the J channel here. And I've got, I'll show you the screws. These are called uh, grip tight screws. They got a rubber washer. They go in the metal. They got a quarter inch uh, head on them. And I've marked my bottom piece where I want to put the screw and I've marked the first one here. So I got to get the panel leveled up. I go ahead and slide it over so this edge is right on the edge of the wood. And I put one screw in down at the corner so then I can get my level and I'll put another one up in here and just kind of tag the panel in place and uh, make sure it's uh, level and everything else. Hold on, I need the right bit in my screw gun. Let me get the panel right flush to the edge of the building here. Like so. My first screw. There we go. So I got one screw in. You want to drive the screw in until you get to the rubber washer. You don't want to super smush it, but you don't want to leave it loose. So I've done done that. Now I can get my level and I can plumb up the side of this, the four foot level, and then I can put a another screw in like here to hold it square. I'm sure there's a few ways to do this. I'm not a metal roof, metal siding expert, but I've done it's my third uh, third time doing it here, like three. So works for me. This is how I do it. good right there. Man. Okay, my panel is perfectly plumb on the outside. So I'm feeling confident. Um, some people will only put a couple of screws in and they'll work along and work along this. I've got this plumbed up. I'm pretty confident. So I'm going to Go ahead and put another screw in here in the center. And then I've also measured and marked my spots down here, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, nail it, or screw it fast here in the center. Watch the level. And then, like I said, that metal, that wooden trim will simulate here. The wooden trim will like just come around here and box in this corner and hold, hold this corner fast.
Got my panel on. I got my overlap here to my second panel. It wants to be tight, but not too tight, not too loose. So I'm just gonna do it so I put the screw in it mushes it down tight to make that seal. I'm gonna tag one here in the middle and then true up my edge, make sure I'm true on the edge here. Some tight gap there. Perfect. It's just that easy. I just got to work real, be carefully, keep my panels plumb and run them right down along the wall here. It's getting kind of dark. So I'm going to, for now, tonight, I'm going to button all these up, put my screws in these two panels, and then cover my material up so it doesn't blow away in overnight. And then tomorrow we'll, we'll run this wall down. All right, bam, it's the next day. Let's check it out here that we got some daylight going and it's another hot, hot one out here. So I'll be dying, but you guys will be watching. Here we go. Like I said, I got the, the, uh, screws in here i've got three layers in i went over to my friend uh, thad's house and i got some old board and batten lumber out of his barn i'm going to be doing the soffit i'm going to leave it natural up here and screw it down but we'll do that later but i'm just going to continue on down the wall marking my panels screwing them on and then i'm just going to like work through the stack how it is here stacked up on the trailer do the back wall and then the 10 foot 6 is the front wall and the side wall so I'll work on them and then uh, get down to the roof metal here on the bottom. Okay, now I got all the panels on except for the last one I've got to do a cut so I'm just going to measure from my overlap to the edge and I've got my uh, single shear sheet metal shears I'm just going to shear the metal off screw the last panel on um, I'm going to go back later on and put some more screws along the top cord and then along the top but I just want to get some panels on so I'm going to half screw it together now and then when I get it all done screw the rest of it together but you saw how pretty it goes pretty fast and as long as you keep it level it works out good so I'm going to put this on, finish this up, and then I think go to the inner front wall and the side wall and put the 10 foot 6 pieces on that I ordered from there. It's going to be trimmed just a little bit different on the inside there, but not quite, not too much. 
but uh, I'll finish this corner up and then we'll go from there. Right over here I got the first panel for the uh, inside wall and I've notched it. This is the outside. I did the same thing, cut the rib off and this is going to go on the door frame and I've notched it for the header piece and I've notched because these go up around the trusses a little bit. So I'm about ready to set this in place. Got my bottom edge put on here and then I've blocked out the uh, post here so we're going to curt and put it up here and see if it works. Well, after a little struggle, I got it up on there. I somehow measured my first truss in the wrong spot. I might have measured for the wrong side of the panel. So I had to cut a big asshole in there. That's all right, don't worry about it. But I got it on there and it's true. Now I just got to measure over. I should have got these, the bottom of the trusses, but they're the same height as the outside wall. So I thought it'd be easier just for ordering wise to get them all along and just notch them around there. Uh, you can see that didn't work out too good for me, but I'm going to measure better and notch the rest of them because I want a little rain protection up that high because of this front door. So I wanted to stub them up. But first one's on there. I'm going to keep going. Here is what the front of the, or actually the back of the interior wall looks like. This will be the back of the gas station wall. And on my uh, girt boards here, I'm going to put shelves out to display all my oil cans and stuff. But you can see it's going to be white. And I, uh, I'll probably paint this lumber white to match. And I'll have a nice display area for inside the, the office here. I've still got to frame all this out. I've got my rest of my deck boards for the floor. And I've got to frame this out and get ready for the windows and stuff. But I want to get all the metal on first. There'll be another video framing this out. But that looks good there. Nice and uh, bright white. I'm happy how this came out even though I, I screwed up some of my cuts there. I was kind of in a hurry and there was a lot going on. And... I don't know what happened. I guess I measured twice and cut three times and I was still wrong. So, anyways, I'm going to fix that one with some little pieces I got. The rest of them are pretty good. But it doesn't really matter for what I'm doing. Good enough for who it's for. That's my rule. Good enough for who it's for. Here's the inside of the short back wall. That looks good. So now this side wall, the uh, pieces I use on the front wall are the same pieces that go here. So I can finish this up. I'm going to start at that end and work this way because of the wind comes out of the west and you want to start away from the wind so your last panel is um, on top and could come off if you ever had a issue it doesn't it doesn't peel itself off one sheet you know one sheet peels the rest of the sheets off it'll just peel off one at a time so we got to start down at that end I've still got to add a set of girt boards up here I'm going up 10 foot six so I gotta put my bottom piece on and then do some lumber across here to 
to make the top and then the rest of this will be barring wood up here. And I trimmed this a little bit differently from the uh, the back panel. I'm sorry, this is the side. I trimmed it different from the back panel. So I got my bottom trim on. But I'm using this Z flashing, and you usually use this to separate, uh, like if you see on the barn over there, usually use this to separate long panels. But I'm turning on its side here. I'm going to use it as an edge gap here. And then when I put on the barn boards for the office, it's going to let the, the waterproofing work for the barn boards here. So I've run it up here, and then the overhang will have a 12 inch, I'm sorry, I have a gray soffit, the six inch soffit that will tie into that. And the metal roof is gonna go, uh, the metal siding is gonna go straight across here, and then at some point step down and then go straight again. I changed my mind, I was gonna run it up and just angle it down. I think it'll look more old if I have a, like a step in it and use barnwood on both sides. That looks good. It tucked in there real nice on the, the Z trim in the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and start running them on out till about we're over uh, almost to that third post over there. And then we'll step it down. Bam, check it out. I took a little hiatus to go to cruise night, but I finished up the back corner here and I've done all my trimming with my Z flashing up here. Kirk, kirk, kirk. And now the, um, what do you call it, the barn boards will have a nice edge, drip edge to fit on, and the water will run off the barn boards off the drip edge and down. And the only thing I need to do now with the wall is put the corner molding on, which I'll do uh, off camera because that's just a piece of three inch corner molding that just gets screwed on. Kirk, over here to cover that up. And then wherever that goes in, I'll tie in the rest of my flashing. But it looks mint. Came out good. I had to add a couple extra boards up there to have the nailer edges for it. But this wall looks good. I think it's good. I like. I was going to run the metal down at an angle, but I like it this way. I can use some more barn board and make it look like it's kind of designed that way. And it'll match like the stepped wall on the other side with the doors, pretty much. So I like how it came out. Here on the inside, it's looking good. Actually feels like a building now because it's closed in a little bit. You can see the nice white on the inside walls here. You can see those extra boards I added to do my nailers. But it's uh, turned into a nice enclosed space here. And then I've got the, the gray wall obviously because the white wall is on the inside of the office. But it looks mint. Came out super awesome. 
But I'm super excited how it's coming out. It's coming out good. It's been a lot of work. It's been super hot again for me. Like seems like every single day is 85, 90 degrees with humidity and blazing hot sun. But you got to build when the sun's shining. That's what I'm doing. And I hope you guys are following along and enjoying it. Come back next time while I put the roofs on the vintage gas station backyard build at the Quick Speed Shop.